everyone and welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today we're going to be reviewing She-Hulk Attorney at Law, episode one. They're going to be airing every Thursday on Disney Plus, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave a like, and let me know down below your thoughts on She-Hulk. So She-Hulk, um, this told us the origin of how Jennifer became She-Hulk. Hulk. It was an incredible episode. It was so well put together. You know, I've supported this show ever since it first got shown and people were against the CGI. The CGI was fantastic. Um, I love how you got to see that spaceship from Thor Ragnarok um, that, you know, ties in with Hulk. You got to see and how Hulk fixed his arm and obviously that in between him recovering and becoming Smart Hulk, he obviously appeared in Shang-Chi, which I thought was really cool. Um, and they've really just tied up a lot of loose ends with Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner's character. Um, you know, his secret lab laboratory in Mexico and, the, you know, how he's at the bar and he's on this island. And it's really cool how they've just tied it up Bruce Banner's character because with him not allowing to have a movie or anything in between, they've had to... Um, give us the fans how he got from A to B, you know, the crash at the start, you know, he got a broken arm and now he's Smart Hulk. We got to see he, from Bruce Banner's forehead, I think, you know, his blood leaked into um, Jennifer's skin and then she became She-Hulk and then we got to see a few um, cases on where she used their powers, you know, at the bar where she was getting approached by men and at the end in the court scene where she had to help uh the court from being attacked by some girl, woman, whoever she is. I think she's one of the main villains. I'm not entirely, entirely sure. Um, but yeah, the way they did this, the training montages, the way Bruce was flabbergasted by everything Jennifer did in this episode, the way she could transform, the way she doesn't have an alter ego, the way she could do the ground slam, uh, throw boulders. <clears throat> The slapping the hands together. It was a really cool experience to see a different variant of Hulk. And I think the, the woman who plays She Hulk has nailed every part of it. Um from the casting to the stereotypical sex system from the guy who's working with Jennifer who always puts her down and always wants her to take a back seat. I love how she's such an empowering woman and now being She Hulk, she's even in a better position. To see the characters that are going to appear in this, apparently set to be a lot of cameos, you know, to see her relationship with Charlie's Daredevil, it's going to be one of my favourites. Um, but just to have an episode where it was just Bruce and Jennifer for an entire 30 minutes was incredible. It's great to see another new character, a character we've never seen an iteration of on the big screen or the small screen as you would. And the MCU is just proving why... It's ahead of the game. It's miles ahead of anything. Like, you know, they've brought so many different characters to the MCU recently. <laughs> Think of the Eternals. No one never heard of. She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight. It's incredible what they're doing. We're balancing out, you know, with having Hulk in this episode. Hawkeye mentoring Kate Bishop. Captain America being mentioned, Tony Stark being mentioned, Black Widow being mentioned. It was funny how they laughed off moments like, how did you turn back and forth between the Hulk and she said, he said, um, Natasha used to sing her a little lullaby. It was just funny moments like that. You could look back onto Age of Ultron, which was in phase two, and you see how far they've come. They mentioned the blip because, again, because um, Marvel don't have the rights to the Hulk films, they're having to clarify everything within this, and it's so good in a way, because it gave us more time with Bruce Banner, so thoroughly excited and happy about what episode one offered, Um, I saw nothing wrong with the episode, you know, you know, the fourth wall breaking was there at the start of the episode, she gave us introduction, and then as soon as the origin ended, she went to the court scene, and then we saw her Hulk up for the first time in modern day. So a terrific, terrific first episode. It ticked all the boxes. And we can move forward now with eight episodes in the present. And, you know, obviously we'll see Hulk pop up again. We'll see Daredevil, as I said. And I'm excited to see who the villain is, who else will pop up, and a lot more lawyering. So, and the timing, you know, actually was decent enough. 30 minutes was a great standard. I'm hoping we get, like, 40-minute episodes going forward now that we don't have the origin 
I thought it depends on the story, depends on what they're trying to tell. But ultimately, it's got we've got a long road ahead. This ends in October. So stay tuned for more. Hope you're excited for the future and hope you enjoyed episode one of She-Hulk, Attorney at Law. Hit the subscribe button, leave a like, and I'm going to give this a huge 10 out of 10 as an opener for She-Hulk. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.